the spotlight is on Miami, the Hurricanes, everything that you need to know about them. Well, the first question, and by 10 miles, the biggest question here, are we getting Tyler Van Dyke circa 2021? Are we getting Tyler Van Dyke circa 2022? What kind of quarterback play are we getting? Uh, listen, I didn't tell you guys this story. When I was down in Miami, I tossed the ball with him for like 20 minutes. I didn't tell him this either. I didn't want him to know. I'll tell you this now. I was tossing with him. We were in the indoor because it was pouring outside. And he, uh, he busted a blood vessel on my finger. I no-sold it. We kept tossing. I didn't drop a single ball. Neither did Francis Malagoa, the freshman left tackle for the record. And so I don't know why I tell you that other than the brag that I threw around the ball with him. But I will tell you this. There's a lot of excitement in that building about the new offensive coordinator. And there is, um, <clears throat> how should I put this? There, there is not a lot of teary eyes that the former offensive coordinator is out the door. I think I've been as diplomatic as I possibly can be with that. Uh, two years ago, over the final nine games, when Van Dyke was the starter, 325 yards per game, 25 touchdowns, six interceptions, and then last year's experiment that was a disaster sees him pass for over 100 less yards per game. Woof. So, you find yourself a wide receiver one, you start to get that room shooken out, shooketh out, shaken out, the way it should be. Uh, what kind of quarterback play are we going to get? That's question number one. Question number two, how impactful are those transfers and true freshmen going to be? That's what everyone's so excited about down there. I just mentioned Malagoa, the left tackle, alien, total alien, crazy athlete. He's going to start for him. Reuben Bain, there on the edge, he's probably going to start for him. Javion Cohen, the transfer from Alabama, a likely starter on the interior of the offensive line if he's healthy. Number seven overall portal class. You're going to get a really strong taste of 2024 Miami this year. It's just that in the meantime, what if they're so good they go ahead and start winning this year? What a novel concept. Question number three. Got to be better defensively. New defensive coordinator there, Lance Guidry. He and Shannon Dawson, both Louisiana boys. What's the caliber there? They allowed 40-plus points in five of those losses last year. And those were not to just the big boys. Middle Tennessee hung 40-plus. Duke hung 40-plus. So when you got Duke and Middle Tennessee just kind of calling the shots, no bueno. Got to make changes. Seven returning starters. Got a lot of portal additions. I, I know the age-old adage. First off, the age-old adage on this show is we don't care about how many starters you return. But also, even if you do, do you really want to be turning, returning a lot of starters from a subpar unit? Hmm. Um, they got good safeties on this team, though. That's one thing they did inherit there. Which brings me to my next point. The spotlight has shown us that the best position group on this team is the safety position. They got the top two tacklers on the team back, both at that position. Cam Kitchens, you see him right there on your screen. If you're watching on YouTube, first team All-American. That's what he did last year. James Williams, All-ACC honorable mention. And I don't think they believe he's come close to scratching the surface of his potential down there, just talking to some people when we were down there last month. But uh, listen, it's always a blessing when you can put a lid on the defense. The thing about it is there is no safety tandem. There is no DB room that can cover forever. So obviously it all works hand in hand with affecting the quarterback. I want to know breakout players, though. Every team, because this is not the NFL, every year there's a player or multiple players that end up shining for your team that did not get a lot of preseason love. Well, we need to give Elijah Arroyo a lot of love. Elijah Arroyo is a breakout player from Miami. He's 6'4", 235, is a tight end. You guys got glimpses of what he could do. Just, just little flashes in 2021. And then injury derailed him in 2022, not to mention Miami did a pretty decent job offensively of derailing themselves. There are people in that program that believe Elijah Arroyo is the best athlete on that team, either side of the ball, regardless of position. And Will Mallory is not there anymore. So he moves on to the NFL. It is a golden opportunity for Elijah Arroyo to blast onto the national scene to be an integral part of that team. This is not an overly established wide receiver room. Therefore, if you've got a dynamite tight end right there, I'm not doing the whole Brock Bowers thing. I'm saying what Bowers has done to the Georgia offense wouldn't surprise me if Shannon Dawson looked up the road in Athens and said, wow, 
well, we got this dude here. He, he is a total freak. Maybe we'll do that with him. So uh, we like Arroyo. You could easily go Malagoa there. You could easily go Ruben Bain, but we went Arroyo. The schedule is not kind. There's no way to sugarcoat this. The league office sure didn't. It's not easy at all. So they've got A&M out of conference, and they've got the toughest ACC schedule, we think, of any team in the conference. They play all five of the top teams in terms of odds in the ACC, aside from themselves, obviously. And then when you dive into it a little bit more, you're looking at their schedule right now. They got an early bye, and then they go, they go to North Carolina and then play Clemson the next week. So playing Clemson off a road game against another good team is bad enough. Clemson's rested. They got to buy before they play you. They go back-to-back road games late in the year in November. In fact, they got three road games in November. Three of their final four are on the road. And the last one sees a bunch of kids from South Florida go to Boston. So there you go. If they get it done this year, they will have earned it. No one's using the word cupcake with that schedule.